I want you to be sensitive, though, through, to Jewish exegetical principles. We generally, we're dealing here with a Jewish mind speaking to Jewish readers. And the author has a pattern of extended expositions from the Old Testament. And that's a, pat, a style that is rare in the New Testament. But it's very common in the rabbinical mind. Okay? The author sought to reorient Old Testament text to the situation by using common rabbinical practices without violating or altering their actual sense to their original audience. In other words, they, they, the writer takes subtle liberties with the quotes that he takes from the Old Testament to make his point. I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean by that. Hillel has a, an exegetical rule called the Gezerah Shawa, a verbal analogy. And the way this happens, he appeals to the rest of Genesis 2, verse 2, in order to explain the rest in Psalm 95. We're going to discover when we get into that part of it next time that the rest of God is resting in Genesis chapter 2 is used idiomatically for the rest that he's alluded to in Psalm 95. The author also followed the Midrashic practice of selectively editing his citation of Psalm 95 by changing the demonstrative pronoun from that generation to this generation. There's a slight subtle, there's a subtle change in the Greek. He's able to apply more forcefully the warning of Psalm 95 to the reader. Instead of saying that generation, he's, he took that liberty to rhetorically make the point that it applies to us as well. Follow me? That's a, that's a typical rabbinical twist. By changing the pronoun of that generation, meaning this generation. And this produces a rhetorical effect without altering the meaning of the original verse. Another example of the author repeated use of today in Psalm 95.7 to modernize the Old Testament text and to stress the urgency of its warning to his audience. Both these things don't do violence to the text. They're ways of like underlining, making, making the point. 